Hey everyone, in this video, I am going to be going over market research. This is part of the marketing unit, um, but it's all about the market research topic. So I'm gonna keep it in this view. I'm not gonna go full screen because I'm afraid that it's going to cut out um, some of the slides. So this lecture, if you don't wanna watch this video, that's totally fine, that's up to you guys. Um, but please make sure that you're going through it because it's gonna help for the activity for today. Um, so I'm going to get right into it, make it as quick as possible, um, but as informative as possible. So go ahead and let's talk about market research. So by definition, you guys, um, market research is just the process of gathering information, looking it over, analyzing it, and then interpreting it, figuring out what it all means. Um, and it can be about a market, so like a group of customers. It can be about a product. It can be about a service that's offered um, or even about past customers, your current customers, or even potential new customers. So companies are constantly doing market research. There is no company out there in the entire world that doesn't do market research, you guys, because their efforts that they do and the money they spend cannot be for nothing. Um, you don't put out products, you don't put out marketing material without having a little bit of data to back it up. Now, why do companies even do market research? I kind of talked about it, but we may be looking for a new customer base. So maybe we have a product and we're looking for new customers to buy that product. Maybe we want to understand our existing customers, okay, get a better idea of their buying habits, their personality traits, um, what they're all about. Uh, maybe you want to make a new marketing campaign. Maybe you want to expand your business. Who knows? Maybe you're offering um, some new products. Maybe you're going to go into different states or even countries. Or maybe there's just a business opportunity. Maybe there's a product or service that doesn't even exist yet, and you realize there's an opportunity for it. So really, um, just as a wrap up to that, market research, it's all about developing a marketing strategy. Um, and it gives you insight into the customer minds. You really have to understand your customers, you guys, or else no one is gonna buy your service or product. Okay, you get a better idea of what's trending. Um, a lot of companies see what's cool, what's you know, what's popular, and then they they act upon that. Um, you have to make sure you're staying ahead of trends because if you're too late, the trend is over and you've missed your opportunity. So market research really gives you that um, insight. So there's two types of research, um, and I'll give you guys kind of an example. So primary. Primary would be if you guys go out and conduct the research yourself. You do all the work. You go and talk to the people. You go um, and visit those locations. You put out surveys. You ask questions. Okay, this is a lot of work, but it gives you such good insight because you know exactly what you're asking. So you can be very specific and only get what you need. So primary, while it's awesome because you get perfect information, it takes a lot of time and money. And sometimes companies don't have that. So what they do use or could use if they don't want to do primary and do all the work themselves and talk to these people firsthand is you can use secondary. And secondary is usually what you guys use. So if I asked you guys to write a paper, you're probably gonna go to Google and use information you find on Google. That's secondary. Secondary information is information that's already been found um, by another person or organization. It's published it, and you can read it. So that might be government reports, stuff you find on Google, newspapers, academic journals. So I would go ahead and guess that most of the stuff that you guys are using is secondary in school. I highly doubt a lot of you are going and doing the work yourselves. You're using already published work. Now, while this is quicker and sometimes easier, you may not find exactly what you need, or it may not be really truthful or very accurate. You don't really have any way of checking that. So really, primary and secondary each have their pros and cons. Now, what are ways companies collect information? They can do surveys, they can have focus groups, phone surveys, you can ask people to come in and test products, maybe do an interview. I would love, and if we were in class, I would ask you guys if any of you have ever participated in these things, because you usually have and have really great stories, but unfortunately, I'm not gonna be able to do that. Um, anytime you're asked, like at the bottom of the Portillo's receipt, like, oh, tell us how we did, get a free medium fry. That's market research because they're trying to collect data on the customer experience. 
Or if you buy a pair of Nike shoes, you get an email later saying, hey, how are those shoes? Tell us about them. That's market research. They're trying to get insight on what you liked, what you didn't like, how was the experience? Because market research is there to make companies better. Now there is a video if you want to watch it. It's from a really good movie called Daddy Daycare, um, but it, it shows kind of what a focus group is. Now before we get into the stuff that's going to help you for the activity, there are some limitations to market research. While it is the most important thing I believe in marketing because it gives you actual usable data that's going to produce results, there are some limitations. It's really expensive to do. So there is money limitations. Customers might lie, believe it or not. Sometimes you guys lie to get through things quicker. Um, it's just a, a trait people do. Um, time limitations, okay? Because market research isn't a quick thing. You have to collect the data, analyze it, interpret it, present it, and then act upon it. So there are time limitations on market research. Customers might tell you, yeah, awesome, I love this product, I'll totally buy it. They walk away and they're not going to buy it. So that's another way that they may lie to you. And then last but not least, this is a pretty big one too, is say you guys do market research. All your data shows, yes, people would totally buy this product. But by the time you actually make it, get it on market, it's totally missed its, its mark. So maybe there's a time lag from the research you do to them actually creating the product. Now, this next... The rest of the, the lecture is going to be what you guys, let me back up, is these are types of survey questions. And this is exactly what your activity is about. So hopefully you're still tuned in. Um, there are five types of survey questions that we're going to focus on. The first two, I am very confident you already know what those two things are. These bottom three, you may actually know what they are. You just don't know them by their proper names, which is ordinal interval and ratio. So I'm going to go through this and then this will lead you directly into your activity. So open-ended, pretty sure you guys know what this is, but this requires more thought than a one word answer. Okay. You wouldn't ask someone like, do you like gum? Yes or no. Maybe you're going to ask them to describe what they like about gum. Um, describe situations where they chew gum whatever the case may be. It's open-ended or good for gaining really insight on how the person feels, their emotion. Now, this is an awesome type of question because you can really get some good stuff, but it is so time-consuming to analyze. Okay, these this isn't just, oh, this many people said A, this many people said B, this many people said C. These all these answers, if you ask 100 people open-ended questions, you could get 100 different responses. So it's going to take a lot of time to gather. And what you see in the red boxes are just examples. So you'll see this on every slide. So if I were to ask you to describe your experience at Six Flags, that's open-ended. And all of you could potentially have a different experience. So open-ended are good. I don't recommend them when we're doing stuff in class because it could take you a long time to actually analyze. Multiple choice, this is the most common, guys. You're just asking a question and giving them multiple answer selections. Um, if you change it to a checkbox, they can select more than one answer. Super easy to count up. This many said A, this many said B, this many said C. So multiple choice seem to be the most popular question people usually use because it's super easy to analyze. Now, the next three, I'm sure you've done before or at least seen, but you may not know the names. So the next one is going to be ordinal. Ordinal is really easy. Just think of order. So you're asking respondents to rank items. So for example, when considering a hotel, please rank the importance of the following, one being most important, five being least important. So say you ran a hotel and you really wanted to see what people were really most concerned about. So it could be location of the hotel, like how close is it to attractions, price, maybe they're more concerned about the room size, if it has Wi-Fi or amenities like a pool, a gym, breakfast, etc. So ordinal is putting something in order. And it can be one through five, one through 10, one through three. It's totally up to you. You decide how many things they're ranking. Last two, interval. Interval, I think they say that this is actually the most common behind 
multiple choice, this requires the person to answer on a scale using two variables. So the variables could be like extremely unlikely to extremely likely or completely satisfied to completely dissatisfied or it was very sweet to very salty. You can change what people are ranking and then you give them numbers and then they write where they kind of fall on that scale. Um, you'll see these quite a bit, especially if you're like asked to rank, like how likely are you to return to the store or how likely are you going to buy from our restaurant again? And you can kind of tell them where you fall on that scale. And last but not least, this is going to look very much like a multiple choice question, but you're asking respondents to respond in a measurable way. So they're often asked like for age ranges or income, um, some sort of numerical value. So the example I put on here is how many hours a day do you spend on your phone? And then you ask them to um, circle which one works best for them. So yes, it has a multiple choice vibe to it, but it's these ranges, okay, zero to one hour and 59 minutes, two hours to three hours and 49 minutes. So notice there's no overlap. Because if I put zero to two hours and two hours to three hours, they could potentially say two and they wouldn't know which one to circle. So you want to make sure that there's these clear cutoffs when you're using a ratio scale and using those ranges. Okay, so really as a recap, make sure whenever you guys are asking any type of survey question, be specific. Because if I said, what do you think about gum? You might be like, uh, what do you mean? What do I think about gum? Do I like it? Do I think there's enough flavors? What's my favorite brand? Ask what flavor of gum do you like the most? Then at least they know what you're you're trying to get at. Um, don't ask what's your favorite kind of gum. Give them choices. Which brand of gum do you prefer? Okay, and then you can list out what you're interested in. So really now is the time, guys, when you're writing survey questions, don't make it messy. Don't make it confusing. That's when people rush through it or start lying or don't do it at all. Make it clear, make it easy, make it super, you know, um, fun to do so that they're not getting frustrated. All right, and last slide. Um, select. This is just kind of a wrap up. Selecting the right questions. Uh, question type is essential when you're designing a survey. Some question types work for certain surveys, some work for other surveys. So it's really on you to make sure that you're picking the right type. So what you're going to do, do not use this activity. Go ahead and go back to the agenda and you guys are going to be using this survey activity. So when you pop it open, this is what it looks like. Um, so using kind of what this video showed you today, guys, this is the survey activity that I want you completing. All right. Hope this was helpful. If you guys have any questions, make sure that you guys email me.